Well, hello to you out there. Lakeisha McKnight is here. Welcome to the Leadership TKO Night Show, uh, where this night show is, of course, the media portion of the Leadership TKO brand uh, that's housed under the company entitled the International Leadership Education and Development Company, LLC, better known as LMBI, or the iLead Company in the Public. And so you feel free, of course, to visit the website to learn more about the brand Leadership TKO by visiting www.leadershiptko.com. And so what our mission is with the brand, with the company, is to partner with associations, with small businesses, uh, with universities to build winning leaders. And so, you know, I definitely appreciate your listenership. I know there's so many of you from around the world listening in. Uh, We checked, of course, our stats as far as where people are listening in. I think over the last month we've had about, wow, I want to say about six or seven different countries listening listening in. We had about five different continents within the last week uh, listening in. So we definitely appreciate each and every one of you. And if I was to specifically call out a few countries, I know Germany has been listening in. I know those of you in South Africa, uh, the United Kingdom. Uh, Canada, uh, those of you in Pakistan, Hong Kong, China, uh, those of you in the Virgin Islands, uh, we do see you. We recognize that you've been listening in as well. Uh, we definitely appreciate those of you uh, in uh, Australia. I believe I might have mentioned that already. Uh, the Netherlands, for those of you listening from the Netherlands, we appreciate your listenership as well. There's so many. And if I've forgotten a country, please forgive me. Uh, but there's so many of you that have plugged into the podcast, but we would encourage you to plug in in a deeper level. Uh, and so we're, we've been on this campaign. Normally, the Leadership TKO night shows on Mondays at nine o'clock p.m. And you probably re- register and you probably um, recognize that. There we go. Recognize that from the Spreaker platform. But we've been going strong every day, Monday through Friday, uh, unless, of course, a concern has happened. But we're here Monday through Friday at nine o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time because we've been on a campaign. We've launched a campaign and actually launched uh, as I was in Asia in in. Thailand. And uh, we've been uh, really empowering women. Uh, We attended, I attended a leadership conference there and uh, displayed and shared a piece of the book that's going to be released, the Leadership TKO for Women book that's going to be released prayerfully by the end of the summer, uh, where we, what we're doing with the book is empowering women and, and as it pertains to the issues that we face. Um, to be able to unify together and stand up boldly to declare that we are women and that we're born to lead, despite, of course, the concerns that we face, um, common concerns that we face around the world, uh, such as wage inequality, um, you know, physical health problems, for example, cancer and lupus and heart disease, you know, these concerns, diabetes, of course, is yet another one. Um, You know, and all other types of concerns, you know, lack of support for family development, being overlooked for promotions within organizations, uh, lack of sometimes a lack of funding. I'm not going to say that's always the case, but, you know, in some places there's a lack of support and funding for females in entrepreneurship. So, again, these are just some things that we want to work on, that we want to unify and bring solutions to. Uh, around the world. And we're calling for leaders who have influence already to rise up and to represent their state and their country as as ambassadors. And so, you know, you find out more about being an ambassador when you actually connect with the campaign officially. And anybody, any of you, even if you don't have a high level of influence yet, but you want to build that influence, we encourage you to get connected to the campaign, right? If you are female, we encourage you to be connected to the campaign, no matter what your age is get connected. And the way that you can get connected is by simply visiting www.borntolead2017.com. That's how you can connect to the campaign. But if you're looking to learn more about the overall campaign and what we're doing and all the elements attached to it, you want to visit www.leadershiptko4women.com. And that will give you a broad perspective about all the elements attached, all the parts attached to this campaign, because we have the book, we have the reality show, uh, we have the conferences and, and so many other elements. So definitely visit the website to get more details. When you do become an official member, we do have a women's campaign uh, board, right? And that link should be on the navigation bar on that leadership TKO for women site. And we're gradually adding the official women's 
the official members, female members there. So be sure that you visit born to lead 2017.com complete the questionnaire. It's going to direct you to the Facebook group where we are hanging out and we're going to soon have our, you know, some small meetings and trainings there get connected so you can be connected in the group and be an official member of the campaign. Uh, Yes, there are going to be ways in which you're going to be able to build your business. Yes, there are also ways in which you can generate income and revenue. If you are a female in business, an entrepreneur, whether you have a team or no team, we encourage you to get plugged in uh, because we're providing quality leadership training by people, women who are under the mentorship of Dr. John Maxwell, who is like the top number one guru in the world as it pertains to leadership. Okay. So, you know, you definitely want to get plugged in and get the training that you need. Of course, there are many other ways to get training. We all know that. Uh, but because of the causes that we're, that we're going to be supporting and bringing awareness to and bringing solutions to, we want you to get plugged in. We're going to allow our voices to be heard. One unified, unified, universal, voice when we come together and we stand together as one. I can't do this without you. I know the other campaign leaders cannot do it without you. We need to come together as one so that we can break down these insecurity barriers, right? Because many, let's, let's be honest, insecurity is a big issue amongst women. And it could be even deeper going further into different cultures of women, okay? Uh, but just to really touch on these issues, I really, really want to encourage you to to get plugged in here because this month we're going to be focusing on several issues that impact women's ability to lead. And we know that one of those um, one of those things that impacts our ability to lead uh, is child abuse and neglect. I I started talking about that uh, on last night and I'm continuing to just go into it just a little bit on tonight, not too much. Uh, but I gave a broad perspective about it, that if you notice it going on, it's important for you to call the hotline and you can simply Google it uh, to to learn how you can report it. And if you are in the social services field, you are probably mandated to report it whenever you hear or see that it's going on. You have to report it and let someone your local authorities know that you, that there is someone being abused or neglected a child. All right. So again, uh, when it comes to physical abuse, I mean, or should say child abuse, there are various types. Um, I know I highlighted just a few, but I want to also talk about the general categories for neglect. Okay. I talked about the different types of abuse, child abuse that occurs, but let's talk about child neglect and the different types of neglectful situations that women face. So just give me a second. I definitely want to pull up some content to share with you. Right. So I have some great information to share with you as it pertains to neglect. Now, of course, that's an oxymoron because no information. You shouldn't really be happy to share any information on that because it shouldn't be going on. Right. It shouldn't be happening. But it does happen. Uh, And so different there are different types of neglect. Number one, you know, a child can be without food. A child can be without shelter. Uh, A child can not receive the necessary medical attention. So that would be medical neglect. Uh, A child can uh, not receive the necessary supervision, which is a popular one, unfortunately, where kids are left alone for long periods of time and their parents are gone. How about abandonment? That's another form of neglect that's really popular where where parents or caretakers just up and leave. And and we're not encouraging these behaviors at all, but these things happen. So if you hear about these things going on, please, please, please report it. Call the hotline, Google it. Just Google child abuse and neglect hotline uh, for your city, state, or country uh, in some some phone numbers, right? Toll-free numbers should pop up. Even if it's after five o'clock, which is a normal work day, end day, or time, there is an 800 number. There should be some people available to assist you after hours. Um, you should be able to call your local authorities as well um, to report any concerns that you see going on. 
So again, um, those are just some examples, you know, lack of food, lack of clothing, a hygiene is also uh, considered neglectful if a parent is not providing clean clothing uh, for their children. So, you know, that can also be, again, an issue. And then I also know that there's one other category uh, that it pertains to neglect, just like physical abuse. Um, there's an other category. There are some situations, some special situations where it is considered neglectful if a child doesn't have a specific thing that they need. So if it's deemed a need uh, and the child does not have it, right, uh, and it's necessary evidence to prove that they need it, then that can be considered neglect. So there's a other other child neglect category, just like there's an other physical abuse category uh, with other physical abuse is more so a threat of harm. I believe when there's a threat against a child that they're going to be harmed, um, it can be considered or, of course, the potential because of history uh, for a caretaker. If there's history with a caretaker abusing a child, uh, then if they have more children and they have not improved their situation, it could be deemed that their future child that's coming into the world can have a threat of harm because of the previous history, unfortunately. So again, these are just some scenarios and situations just to give you a little bit of education as it pertains to categories for child abuse and child neglect. Now, again, for those of you who didn't hear uh, the categories for, for abuse, abuse can fall under, as I mentioned, other physical abuse, sexual abuse, which we'll go into more detail on other episodes. All of these categories, we're going to go into more detail. OK, a little bit later on. But there is physical abuse, of course. There is uh, medical, you know, medical where, you know, there's just there's there's just a plethora of things going on that can happen with that. Um, when it comes to abuse, it can also be mean that uh, that there is I think I've talked about emotional abuse. Right. All of these things are can be considered abuse, sexual abuse, physical abuse, emotional abuse. All these things are abusive. So normally with emotional abuse, you really, really have to get proof from a psychiatrist, a, psych a therapist that proves that these things are harmful to a child's ability to grow mentally um, and damaging to their either their self-esteem or can cause to can lead the child to cause harm against themselves or others. Then, of course, a, a professional would write up a letter and say this is deemed harmful uh, and would report it. So all of these things I, I'm mentioning in it because it impacts if a child who is a female experiences abuse or neglect, it can impact their ability to lead even at a young age because leadership can start young. There are so many influential young people out there. And if we don't become advocates for helping protect them from being abused and neglected and bringing these issues to light and talking about ways in which we can provide solutions, whether it be for parents or for kids. And there are many out there that I'll talk about a little bit later. If we don't bring this up, then we're not being a part of the solution. So again, uh, you know, these elements, these things impact women's ability to lead starts when they're younger. And some women have not been healed. And you might have fallen in that category. You might know someone who's in that category who, has, who was, as a child, abused or neglected or a combination of both. And if you know and they need some assistance, recommend, encourage them. Of course, be, uh, be someone who can empower and encourage them with resources. Uh, maybe get them someone that they can talk to and process those concerns, even if they're adults now. They still can process what happened to them as a child by getting a therapist, someone that they can talk to, a professional therapist or a spiritual leader whom they can, you know, they confide in and they can share that personal information with. So, again, you know, this is just some information to educate you, to let you know that it's real. Child abuse and neglect is out there. It's real. It's happening. Um, I'd be glad to share with you some statistics um, in some of these episodes, I will, I will share some of those statistics. I will share of other people's experiences. And as a matter of fact, of course, as I mentioned before, I started going into a little bit of my experience and a lot of these things happen in our households and they don't come to light until adulthood. And with my situation, mine didn't come out until adulthood. Uh, but it came out through another family member of mine. Uh, and of course, at that particular point, help was, uh, received and of course consequences had to be brought upon the person that did the abusing. But, you know, we were trying and through prayer, 
definitely bring mending and bringing restoration to the family. And, and we know that it's God that's helping us to be able to move forward through these situations that have happened. So many people deal with these situations in different manners. Uh, and so we're hoping, of course, that we can provide some hope and some strong, positive coping mechanisms for those of you who are dealing with it. I know the way in which I dealt with my experience as far as sexual abuse is concerned, I dealt with it spiritually, you know, as an adult. Um, of course, I had many people to talk to. I had spiritual a spiritual advisor. Uh, we definitely had moments where we had um, women's gatherings and we came together. So these are just some ways in which I dealt with my experience and processed it. Okay. And I later learned that many of these things happen, not just to myself, but to my mom. And I'm quite sure then now knowing that, that it probably happened to some other people as well. So you have to nip it in the butt. You have to let the enemy, for those of you who are spiritually minded, let the enemy know that the buck stops here and that it's not going to happen again uh, in any type of generation from that point forward. Uh, we don't allow those generational issues to continue to occur inside of your household, but let that situation end with you um, or let it be obliterated uh, or uh, let it be eliminated or destroyed uh, through your strong coping skills and through your ability, right, to stand strong and, and let the world know that you still can lead despite those things happening. All right. So giving you a little bit of education on child abuse and neglect, share it with you, of course, how I processed my way through uh, the sexual abuse experience that I experienced as a child uh, and how I cope with it. Of course, there's more deeper elements besides that. And I go into detail within that book, Leadership TKO for Women, I share of my story inside of the book. So I definitely encourage you, strongly, strongly, strongly encourage you to, to look into potentially getting a copy of the book. And again, we're going to let you know when the exact date will be, when the book will be available uh, in Amazon, of course, as well as in the local bookstores. And so there's going to be a time where we want everyone on the, you know, at the same week to go get their copy at the bookstore. OK, and so, again, I just want to say thank you so much for plugging in uh, and listening into the podcast. No matter where you're from, I appreciate you. If no one else tells you thank you, I say thank you on behalf of all the campaign leaders. Thank you so very much. Remember, we have so many things going on with this campaign. We have our first convention happening uh, in Portsmouth, Virginia on May 27th of this year from 1030 to 5 o'clock p.m. You can learn more about this convention, about possibly getting your ticket by visiting www.leadershiptkoconvention.com. Uh, we'd love to see you there. Uh, there's so many things on the agenda. <laughs> we have inspirational speakers. We have trainers. We have a panel discussion. We have networking and shopping and so much more at this convention. So be sure to be in the building. All right. Uh, and then, of course, connect with the campaign. If you're not officially a member and connected, you will go to simply wwwborn to lead 2017 Dot com. But until tomorrow, we're coming back tomorrow to talk more about these concerns. But until then, remember to think, speak and live leadership. <laughs>